This article discusses tie in merchandise and non televisual media associated with Thunderbirds, a British science fiction TV series created by Jerry and Sylvia Anderson in 1964. Since Thunderbirds was first broadcast in 1965, more than 3,000 tie in products, including children's toys, print media, and audio episodes, have been marketed. Books Between 1966 and 1967, eight original Thunderbirds novels were written by John William Jennison four under the pseudonym, John Thaden, and Kevin McGarry, three focus on the character of Lady Penelope. In 1992, Corgi Books published four children's novelizations, all written by Dave Morris. In 2008, Minnesota-based FTL Publications, in association with Diamond Comic Distributors, launched a new series of original novels written by Joan Marie Verba with artwork by Steve Kite. Verba had attempted to obtain the license as early as 2004, while Carlton Television was in the process of merging with ITV Granada. After waiting several months, she contacted Granada, and after three years of discussions FTL Publications was finally granted the license in 2007. It was the first license for Thunderbirds titles to be given to an American publisher, and the books constitute the first new, official series of Thunderbirds novels to be written since the 1960s. Countdown to Action, published in June 2008, reveals the founding of International Rescue, exploring the establishment of the organization and the construction of its machines. The other books highlight the individual Tracy brothers, as well as Brains. Topic. List of novels and novelizations Topic. Comics A comic strip featuring the characters of Lady Penelope and Parker, set prior to their joining International Rescue, debuted in the first weekly issues of AP Films Publishing's children's title TV Century 21 in early 1965, several months prior to the first broadcast of Trapped in the Sky. A full-length Thunderbirds strip debuted in the comic's 51st issue, published in January 1966. Originally written by editor and Thunderbirds TV scriptwriter Alan Fennell, this mostly replaced the Lady Penelope strip, which moved to a sister comic of the same name. The Thunderbirds strip, illustrated by Frank Bellamy, was the centerpiece of TV Century 21 rebranded TV 21 in January 1968 for 186 issues and 30 serials, until October 1969. At their peak, combined weekly sales of TV Century 21 and Lady Penelope in the 1960s numbered 1.3 million. In 1966, Thunderbirds featured as a strip in the Daily Mail. A Thunderbirds annual was published by Century 21 Publishing from 1966 to 1968, and a Lady Penelope version until 1969. Thunderbirds also appeared in the parent TV Century 21, TV 21 annual until 1969. The same year, a joint Captain Scarlet and Thunderbirds annual was released. Starting in October 1991, the Bellamy illustrated strips, as well as some that had first appeared in Lady Penelope, were reprinted in Fleetway Publications' fortnightly Thunderbirds, the comic. Again edited by Fennell, this new title had a 30 month publication run and achieved peak sales of 100,000 copies. Reprints had previously appeared in Polystyle Publications Countdown, briefly titled TV Action Plus Countdown, and Thunderbirds Holiday Special Series in the 1970s and 1980s. In 1992, Rivette Books reprinted 13 strips in a graphic album series. Topic home video The 1980s and 1990s saw a number of Thunderbirds VHS releases by Polygram and its subsidiary, Channel 5 Video Distribution. These proved to be a significant commercial success for Channel 5. Due to rights concerns, not all episodes were released unedited, some were issued in the Super Space Theater format, for which pairs of thematically similar episodes had been combined to create double-length compilation films for U.S. broadcast syndication. The compilations were, Thunderbirds to the Rescue, combining, Trapped in the Sky, and, Operation Crash Dive, Thunderbirds in Outer Space, Sun Probe, and, Ricochet, and Countdown to Disaster, Terror in New York City, and, Atlantic Inferno. 
The videos opened with a brief introduction by Parker, informing the viewer of other Jerry Anderson video releases. Volume 12 contained a selection of Lions Made advertisements featuring characters from the Anderson Productions, and Volume 14 a Making of Thunderbirds featurette. Upon its acquisition of the brand in 1999, Carlton International Media commenced work on remastering Thunderbirds for the first Region 2 DVD releases. Dolby 5.1 surround sound was added, and the existing picture and mono sound cleaned up with the aid of digital restoration and noise reduction technology. In addition, the original soundtrack was enhanced with the insertion of new sound effects and background foley mainly explosions, aircraft and other mechanical noise, and vocal echo Anderson, who had received no royalties from the series' distribution since relinquishing his rights to it in the 1970s, was hired as remastering consultant. Region 1 DVDs were released by North American distributor A&E Home Video in 2001, with a «Complete Series» box set following in 2002, it was re-released in slimmer packaging in 2008. The same year, Thunderbirds was released, both in installments and as a box set, on Blu-ray disc in the UK. The region-free version distributed in Region B presents episodes in a vertically panned and scanned, 16 to 9 aspect ratio. A Japanese set, released by Genian Universal in 2013, restores the original 4 to 3 picture. On June 9, 2015, Timeless Media Group and Shout! Factory through their deal with ITV released the complete series on DVD and Blu-ray in the US, both formats presented in their original full-screen ratio. List of UK home video releases The following is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> list of US home video releases The following is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> Music releases. The first Thunderbirds exclusive music record was the mini album Great Themes from Thunderbirds MA116, originally titled Requested Themes from Thunderbirds, published by Century 21 Records in 1967. Two soundtrack albums were released by Silva Screen Records, to favorable reviews on the AllMusic website and by Uncut Magazine, in 2003 and 2004. A 40th anniversary release, The Best of Thunderbirds, a double album featuring music from the first two CDs in addition to three previously unreleased tracks and exclusive CD-ROM content, was released in 2005. In 2015, Fanderson released a four-disc set for its members in celebration of the 50th anniversary. It contains music either written for, or used in, all but one episode as Cry Wolf. Contains no original music, nor any music that was not used in other episodes, it is not included on the set. Beyond the TV series, composer Barry Gray's contributions to Thunderbirds included four original songs recorded exclusively for audio release Lady Penelope, Parker, Parker Well Done, and The Abominable Snowman, all sung in character by Sylvia Anderson and David Graham. Topic. Soundtrack release track listings All tracks written by Barry Gray Topic. Toys When Thunderbirds was first broadcast, AP Films merchandising awarded licenses to companies such as Matchbox and Dinky to manufacture plastic and die-cast metal Thunderbirds vehicle toys. The subsidiary issued approximately 120 such licenses, even buying a company J. Rosenthal to keep up with demand. Among the first items released by Dinky were a blue rather than green Thunderbird 2 and a 6-inch long 15 centimeters Fab 1, of which more than 2 million were manufactured. By 1966, British commentators had dubbed the end-of-year shopping season Thunderbirds Christmas in the light of the series' popularity. Themed birthday cards for children, for ages 6 to 10, were available in Australia in the mid-1960s. Japanese model kits of the vehicles continued to be marketed into the 1980s. In the early 1990s, Matchbox launched a new range of toys to coincide with the BBC's Thunderbirds revival. 
Despite poor sales in the weeks leading up to Christmas 1991, when demand overwhelmed supply, by the following December the series had provided manufacturers and retailers with the most successful British tie in merchandising campaign since Star Wars. Matchbox's Tracy Island playset quickly became the UK's most sought after toy, resulting in stock shortages, fights between customers in shops, and a rising black market surrounding the item. The story was reported in the national press. The 1991 Matchbox range included Following the success of the Thunderbirds repeats and merchandise, the BBC scheduled Stingray for repeats, for which Matchbox again issued a small line. In 1993, the children's programme Blue Peter broadcast a making of, showing viewers how to build a Tracy Island of their own using, as described by the show's publicity. Old newspaper, pipe cleaners, yogurt pots, cereal packets and bits of sponge. So high was demand for a free instruction sheet detailing the process that the BBC was forced to withdraw its giveaway offer and release Anthea Turner's demonstration, Blue Peter makes a Thunderbird's Tracy Island, on home video. When the BBC repeated Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons in the early 2000s, the Thunderbirds toy license was reissued to Vivid Imaginations, who later produced a similar range of Thunderbirds products for the series' second BBC revival in 2000. The 2000 Vivid Imaginations range included A limited edition Thunderbird 2 by Virgin Group was also available, albeit in red as opposed to green. Some items from the Vivid Imaginations collection were re-released in different packaging for the series' 40th anniversary in 2005, with the Tracy Island playset being advertised as having new, interactive launch stations. Bandai manufactured toys to coincide with the release of the live-action film in 2004, and fellow Japanese companies Aoshima, Konami and Takara continue to manufacture Thunderbirds toys today from the original schematics, for example, Takara's Thunderbird 2 with functioning lights and landing struts. Vivid Imaginations will market a line for the series' 2015 remake. Topic. Video games. In 1985, the first Thunderbirds video game was released for the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. The title required the player to pilot Thunderbird 1 and Thunderbird 2 and explore an Egyptian style labyrinth. In 1989, Grand Slam Entertainment released a title for the Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Atari Street, MSX, and ZX Spectrum. Activision released a NES version the following year. In 1993, a title by Super Famicom, subtitled Kokuso Kaiyujotai Shutsudu Seo, was released in Japan only. Psy Games published a Game Boy Color title in 2000. The following year, it released a collection of Microsoft Windows themes and screensavers titled FAB Action Pack, as well as Thunderbirds, International Rescue for Game Boy Advance. In 2004, a second Game Boy Advance title was released by Vivendi Universal Games. A new Thunderbirds video game was released in Europe for the PlayStation 2 in July 2007. The North American release was cancelled. <laughs> Board games The cooperative board game Thunderbirds, was designed by Matt Leacock and released in 2015 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the TV show. Players work together using Thunderbirds characters and vehicles to complete rescue missions and save the day. The game is published by Modifius Entertainment and three expansion sets were also released in 2016. Topic. See also Thunderbirds audio episodes